do you know, I don't think prayer works. I mean, I'm always praying for world peace and justice, for an end to violence and suffering and pandemics. But they never seem to happen. They never seem to arrive. Do you experience this, where you pray for something to happen and it doesn't happen? Prayer doesn't work so long as you remain under this impression that prayer is simply a petition, a wish list that is put before God and he miraculously makes those things happen. And do you ever wonder what kind of people God would be making us into if that were the case? And if prayer did work that way, what would happen when two groups of Christians are praying for opposite things to happen? A God simply not waiting for a certain amount of votes to come in to make his mind up on how he's going to act. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that God doesn't care or doesn't listen to our prayers. And I'm not saying that miraculous things don't happen. I've seen for myself and I believe in a God who is miraculous and for whom all things are possible. But it's something I've been thinking about, wanted to share, wanted to remind us that there is so much more to prayer, more than I can fit into this video, sadly. In many ways, what is true and particularly relevant at the moment is that prayer is about creating a space where you meet with God, where you just dwell together, perhaps in stillness, perhaps in outcry, but coming just as you are, fully human with all your baggage, all the things that are weighing heavily on you, all your burdens, and being with God. Because God wants to be drawn into your real life, wants to walk alongside you. And so that means when you're finding times to pray, that, that could be anywhere. It could be in your car. It could be whilst doing the washing. It could be whilst going for a walk. It could be on your knees at home. One more thing I'd, I'd like to share with you is about breath. So the Bible in many places, like in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, calls us to pray constantly, unceasingly, never stop praying. Now, I don't know about you, but that's, that's quite a hard order to fill. Um, there are times in the day when I'm thinking about less holy things like TV shows or what's for dinner. The idea of praying unceasingly seems to be, in some ways, an unrealistic expectation. And so it's been suggested that breath can be part of the answer to that. I even had it, heard it said recently that the name attributed to God from the Old Testament, Yahweh, which you may have heard, is in many ways possibly an attempt to replicate breathing as a name. I guess in the in-breath would be the ya, and way is the out-breath. And we can use breath and our breathing patterns, our rhythm of breathing, to help carry prayers so that we're praying even when we're not thinking about it. It's been suggested, therefore, that if Yahweh, if our breath is a prayer, then when a baby is first born, the first thing that baby does is call out to God in prayer by name. And the last thing we do when we die is call out God's name in prayer. So when you're praying, whether that is mindfully in words, whether that is listening to your breathing, or even laying words alongside your breath. Remember that God wants to meet with you, that you are loved, that you are cared for. God's Holy Spirit is dwelling within you.